Well, welcome to another episode of Breakaway from the Rat Race. And today I have the immense pleasure of speaking with Garrett Sutton. Uh, Garrett is an attorney and best-selling author and one of uh, Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad advisors. Garrett has over 35 years of experience assisting individuals, businesses to limit their liability, protect their assets, implement advantageous corporate structures, advance their financial goals, and tax strategies and all of that. He's, uh, I, I'm a big fan of, of Garrett. I, I've read a couple of his books and they're always fantastic and so resourceful. Uh, and we're gonna get right into it. So Garrett, welcome to the show. Thanks, Eric. Thanks for having me. So I'm, I'm very excited to have you and be able to speak with you. My favorite book and uh, that the one that I've, you know, that I refer to on a regular basis is Loopholes of Real Estate. I think this is this is a must have if you don't have that book already, if you haven't read it. I think this is absolutely important that, that you read it. And uh, and what's great about it is that it kind of like combines everything. It talks about tax strategies. It talks about legal uh, legal strategies to protect your asset, to, uh, you know, to, to create the right structure and all of that. And uh, and also tax strategies, which is also very important. Well, and, uh, you know, people do like the loopholes book because, like you say, Eric, it brings together information that investors really need to know about. Um, you know, when you start out, you don't know anything. They don't teach anything in school. So you have to get this information on your own. And that's why I wrote Loopholes of Real Estate was to bring forward the, the tax strategies, the legal strategies, the 1031 exchange. Uh, people forget about transferring title and the right way to transfer title. So we talk about that in there uh, as well, Eric. Uh, so, yeah, people do like the book for that reason. Yeah, and you're you're explaining it in such like easy layman's terms. I mean, this is like you know you could really bury anybody you want in te terminology and technical aspects of things, but you really you're helping the, the the person that's just getting started to kind of like get a hold of you know legal corporate structure and tax strategies and all of that, and kind of like explaining that in layman's terms. That's what I really like about it. Well, and I try to tell stories to explain the legal principles. You know, people react to stories. They, they can take in information through a story. And uh, so we try and write in clear English and, and tell a story and then apply the legal principle to the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you also talk about, um, I mean, you have other books as well, obviously, about kind of like getting the, uh, you're building your own corporation and all of that. So these are all you know, very good, very good books as well. Uh, <clears throat> what I liked about that loopholes is that it kind of like was bringing these these two components together. That was very important when you get started. And when you talk, I mean, you still do you do consulting. You help. You, you're very involved in helping uh, investors get in on the uh, in the real estate and investing in real estate the right way. Uh, <clears throat> so, what what do you see uh, investors that are getting started that are still that are not doing yet and the, you think they should be focusing on and they should be getting right right at the beginning well two things eric one is you know we are a very litigious society people sue each other all the time and you've got to take steps right at the start to protect yourself so you buy that first duplex you can hold title in your individual name but if a tenant sues they can reach not only the equity in the duplex but all your personal assets all you have to do is uh, set up an LLC to take title to that property. If the tenant sues, they can get what's inside the LLC. So you're not going to put 10 properties in there, but they can't get beyond the boundaries of the LLC. They can't go after your savings account, your personal assets. So we want to set that LLC uh, for real estate up right at the start. You know, what happens is I, I hear it all the time, Eric, where a CPA says, well, you know, you're not making that much money now. You don't really need yeah. the LLC, but you do, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you need it right at the start. Yeah. And then the second thing, Eric, that people forget to do is transfer title. So you've set up the LLC. You have to take the next step of transferring title from your name 
into the name of the LLC. If the title stays in your name, you still don't have any protection. So yeah. you're going to use a grant deed or a warranty deed mm -hmm. to transfer title from you to you, not a quit claim deed. A quit claim deed severs the title insurance. So you're going to use a the right deed and transfer title into the name of the LLC. And that gives you the protection. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people are using quit claim deed to transfer titles and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely. Um, so this is very, very interesting. And the other thing too, I mean, it kind of goes back to um, kind of when I was, my parents were not business oriented at all. I mean, I had to learn everything kind of by myself. And unfortunately, you wrote your book a little late. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, but um, you know, the, the nice thing about it is that now I know. Uh, but um, so it was kind of interesting because a lot of people think I had my parents had all kinds of misconception about about business, about oh, how, how come these people, they, they went bankrupt here or they had some problems here and they shut down their business, but they still have their houses. They still have their their nice cars and stuff like that. So they must be cheating the system. They must be doing something illegal and all of that. And that's just because my parents didn't know kind of what was the right structure to protect um, to protect your assets. And, and then obviously these individuals that were in business, they knew how to protect their asset, how to structure it the right way so that if, you know, you get sued, if you lose your, um, you know, you, you, something goes bankrupt, you're not losing everything. You're just, you're losing that part of the venture. It's still painful, but it's not, it's not the, the end of the world. Exactly. And the system uh, is set up so that attorneys have an incentive to sue. They get to mm -hmm. keep 35 to 40 percent on a contingency fee. And, and you and I, Eric, are not going to change that system. But the system also provides us the ability to set up LLCs, corporations, in some cases, limited partnerships to protect ourselves. So and, you know, you'll hear people say, oh, well, asset protection, you're, you're avoiding uh, your obligations. No, you're not. You're just setting things up so that you're protected from the litigation explosion that is out there. And so uh, you just need to take these steps. Again, they don't teach this in school. Yeah. And so like you, Eric, you have to get a good book, a couple good books and learn this on your own and then you can stay protected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is something that's very interesting. I mean, in school, they don't teach you that. I mean, I, I had some people that they went to business school and then um, and then I was working with them on some, some ventures and then they didn't know how to structure their entities. I mean, they knew the theory of limited liability and limited partnership and corporations and stuff like that, but they still didn't know, okay, now I'm starting a business. What structure do I use? I mean, right. come on. <laughs> You'd think it'd be a course in business school, but I, I went to business school undergrad and they never had such a course for me yeah. either. Yeah, it's not very, it's not practical. It's not no. made for, uh, for people that want to, um, you know, go in business and start their business. You, uh, so, Garrett, you, you've written a number of books. I think you probably wrote like what, 10, 10, 12 books or something like that. And, um, so what is uh, loophole? I know you have a new book coming out and we're going to talk about that in, in a second. Which other book uh, after loopholes uh, for real estates have, should people re uh, read that you wrote? Well, a starter would be start your own corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's really talks about the need for limited liability protection, why we set up corporations and LLCs. Uh, you know, that's kind of the starter book. Yeah. Uh, then, then we have run your own corporation. A lot of people said, you know, I've set up my LLC and corporation. Now what do yeah, I do? Exactly. And, yeah. and so run your own corporation talks about the things you have to do uh, during your fir first few years of business. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, Eric, loopholes is really about investing in real estate, using asset protection and the tax code to maximize your investment. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So let's talk about your new book, Veil Not Fail. Veil uh, Not Fail. Yes. So, so tell us about that. Why did you, uh, did you write this book? Well, you know, uh, piercing the veil is the most overlooked facet of asset protection. And what piercing the veil means is when you set up that corporation or LLC, you have this veil of protection. 
so that if someone sues the business and there's no money in the business, if they try to go after you, the veil, the corporate veil of protection protects you from being personally held responsible. But if you don't follow these simple rules called the corporate formalities, the veil comes down and they can pierce through and reach all of your personal assets. So this is the most overlooked facet of asset protection. Not many people understand that you need to follow these simple rules. And Eric, a lot of people have set up their entities online and they don't even know that there are these simple rules Mm -hmm. uh, to follow. And what's interesting is in 50% of all cases, the veil is pierced. Yeah. People go to court, they get a, a claim against the LLC. There's no money in the LLC. And 50% of the time, they can go after the individual personally. Wow. And so that is not a good number. No. Too many people aren't following the formalities. They're not hard to follow. But if you don't follow them, it's pretty dramatic. Your personal assets are at risk. Yeah, I think I think thinking that you're protected is actually worse than being unprotected at least you know you're unprotected <laughs> now when you think you're protected <laughs> right. this is a big this is a big problem <clears throat> right yeah right so you have to follow these rules you have to have <laughs> a meeting every year you mm-hmm. know once a year you have the meeting you jot down the what happened at the meeting it's not hard to do uh, they, they're called meeting minutes, you know, not meeting hours. You just yeah. write down what happened at the meeting. And when you form the entity with us, we give you a book that has the templates for all the meeting minutes. You can do it yourself, yeah. uh, but a lot of people don't. And so we offer a service that does that. But, you know, Eric, a lot of people have heard this, this misinformation out there that with an LLC, you don't have to have meetings. Mm-hmm. And I totally disagree with that. When you get in front of a court, When you're in front of a judge or a jury and you say, well, I I never had meetings. I don't have to have meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, a juror is going to say to themselves, well, how do you run a business for 10 years without a meeting? You you, you really need to have a meeting Mm -hmm. every year. And then you need to pay the state their fee. If you don't pay the annual fee, Wyoming, it's only $62 a year. But if you don't pay that fee to the state, they're going to revoke your charter and you have no asset protection. So veil not fail goes through all the requirements that you need to do. Again, we use real cases. We tell stories about how you can uh, follow the rules easily. Um, Mm -hmm. And and again, if you don't follow the rules, they're piercing the veil in half of all cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also depends a lot. I think there's some states, it's a lot easier to pierce the veil than others. I mean, I mean, I live in California right now. And uh, I know that if you were paying your, per- well, I, what I heard is that if you were paying any kind of personal bills out of your co- company bank account, to your LLC's bank account, then, oh, that's it. You were, you were piercing the veil. You had commingling of funds and that's it. You, uh, that, that's all you had to do. Pay your cable bills or your phone bills with uh, the cor- corporate money. And that's it. You're absolutely right. I mean, you have to have a separate bank account Uh, You have your personal bank account. You pay your personal expenses through that. You have a separate business bank account. You do all your banking through that. And from the bank, from the business account, you're going to pay yourself a salary into your personal account and pay all your uh, personal expenses through there. But you're right, Eric, if you, in California, if you are uh, commingling funds, they are going to pierce the veil. Uh, And, and it's like, asset protection. We have three good states, Wyoming, Nevada, and Delaware, because states get to compete against each other to be the best in terms of asset protection. Well, when it comes to piercing the veil, we have each state has their own corporate law. And so some states are more strict than others. But, you know, overall, you just want to follow these simple rules. It doesn't matter what your state's rules are, just follow these rules, you know. Yeah. So if uh, with your book, uh, you know, veil not fail, that means that, you know, even if you're in California and it's a little bit easier to, you know, to pierce the veil here in California, if you follow these simple rules, <clears throat> you're still going to be protected. You're still going to do, do well. Right. And these rules are very simple to, to follow. And uh, so you, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, Correct. They're, they might be a little bit more lenient in other states, but 
as long as you follow the rules in each of the states, then you're going to be you're going to be fine, even in California, where it's a little bit easier to break. Right. Right. And so another thing people have to realize is you need to do that separate tax return. You've got the separate business bank account and you're going to file the separate business tax return. If you combine everything onto your personal return, unless you're a disregarded entity, there's a little wrinkle there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when you have partners, you're going to file a separate tax return uh, for each entity. That's one of the corporate formalities you need to follow. Mm -hmm. You also need to provide corporate notice. And what that means is when you have, let's say, a triplex in an LLC, uh, when you sign a lease with a tenant, you want it to the lease to be in the name of uh, Eric's LLC, yeah. not yeah. just Eric individually. It needs to say Eric's LLC, and then you sign as manager. So we want yeah. the tenant to realize that they're <laughs> leasing from an LLC. Uh, they're not leasing from Eric personally. It's it's yeah, from an yeah. LLC. So we want corporate notice on the lease, on the checks, it should say LLC, on your business card, it should say LLC. So you, you just want the world to know that they're yeah, doing yeah. business with an LLC, which means that you are claiming the protection, the limited liability protection of an LLC. Uh -huh. So uh, there's a lot of people that are um, kind of like they pick a state like Wyoming, they pick Nevada, and you mentioned Delaware as well. Is there a big difference between these these states in, in terms of protection and um, you know for for person for personal liability, etc.? Well, they're all all three are great at protection, and again they compete against each other. So all three protect the single member LLC, the one owner yeah. LLC in California. Uh, Florida, uh, Utah, they don't protect the single member LLC like the three states do. So okay. they compete to be the best. Now, in terms of fees, uh, Delaware is $350 a year. Nevada is $350, $350 a year. Yeah. And Wyoming is only $62 a year. Yeah. And then in terms of privacy, Nevada, you have to list uh, the name of the member or manager on the state website. Uh, Delaware has privacy and Wyoming has privacy as well. They don't even list your name. Yeah. So Eric, when we weigh it all out and, and the asset protection is the same, the fees, uh, Wyoming has the advantage and Wyoming also has the privacy advantage. Uh, most of our clients pick Wyoming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's where I had most of, most of my uh, LLC. I think I had to do a couple in Delaware because it was a some kind of requirements from the bank that I was working with, they wanted to have a right. Delaware LLC, right. but but that's really the um, the only thing. <clears throat> so you made a, a difference between a single member LLC. What about uh, LLC where you have multiple members? Is there a difference in the protection? Uh, well, mm -hmm. the, the the multiple member LLC is protected in pretty much you know all states. Uh, all states. California is very weak. New York's weak, but. In, in most states, the multiple member LLC is protected. They have a problem with the single member LLC in some states because the, the theory is that when someone gets sued individually, uh, we don't want to force them to have to sell, sell the business. You know, it's not fair to the other partner uh, if they shut everything down. But with the single member LLC, there's no other partner to protect. Yeah, yeah. Right? So the, some courts have said, look, we're not going to protect the single member LLC. The whole reason for this charging order protection is to protect the innocent partner. Well, there's no yeah. innocent partner here. There's only one guy. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. you can see why some states have the rationale of not protecting the single member LLC, which why it's important to know that Nevada, Delaware, and Wyoming in, mm -hmm. in their statute, in the code, uh, protect the single member LLC, which is what you want. Yeah, exactly. So um, any other kind of like uh, things that uh, that we need to do in, with, uh, in order to protect the LLC, to protect our assets and uh, against liabilities, basically? Well, uh, I don't like putting too many properties in one LLC. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have 10 properties in one LLC and a tenant sues over one property, they can get the equity in the other nine. Yeah. So we don't like to do that. When you cross state lines, it makes sense to have a new LLC. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're going to 
invest in Oregon and you buy a property in Washington, I think it's best to set up a Washington LLC for that new property uh, because you're governed by Washington law anyway. Yeah. Um, and then in that scenario, we, when you have the Oregon LLC and the Washington LLC, we have it owned by one Wyoming LLC. Mm -hmm. And that gives you the charging order protection uh, from the outside attack. You get in a car wreck, Eric. It has nothing to do with the real estate. They'd like to get at the Oregon and yeah, Washington yeah. LLCs, but they have to fight through Wyoming yeah, yeah, where yeah. they have the strong charging order protection, uh, which is it's really a lien on distributions. And, you know, people just don't get through those Wyoming LLCs. Um, and so it offers excellent protection. At the same time, we like for our clients to have insurance, um, you know, an umbrella policy of insurance with your personal home and your autos, an extra million dollars of coverage is only 400 a year. Mm -hmm. And the attorneys suing over the car wreck know how to get at that money, yeah. right? Yeah. And then if there's enough insurance money for them to reach, they leave you alone mm -hmm. on the Wyoming LLC. So that's how we like to structure everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, often they would uh, they would know how much insurance liability is is there, and then you know is it worth fighting for more than that when you can right. easily get the the insurance money. So sometimes it's enough. So I, I've set uh, so I I do uh, I do business like say in, in Tennessee and Michigan and all of that, and um, so all these LLCs that I, I have separate LLCs in uh, in the different states. And then, but they all, they have one single member, which is the, an LLC in, in Wyoming. It all kind of goes to the Wyoming one. And then it goes to, and then it's owned by me in, um, actually it's owned by an S Corp in California right now, which is where I am. But that's, so my thinking is that, you know, if, you, if something happens in Tennessee, they're gonna have to fight through Wyoming and then they're gonna have to fight in California and in, in, you know, in right. order to get to me eventually, so. right. Yeah. So, you know, you've set it up so that you have the the uh, the Wyoming LLC is really difficult for people to get through. Mm -hmm. The court in Wyoming gives you this charging order, which is a lien on distributions, meaning the car wreck victim can collect what you were going to collect. Well, you may not make any distributions yeah. out of that LLC. Uh, you may you know, buy more property or, you know, do, do other things with that money rather than distribute it out. And we just don't see many cases uh, involving this because the attorneys, they don't want to hire an attorney in Wyoming to monitor distributions. It's just yeah. not a good yeah. use of their time. They'd rather go on to the next case with insurance. And, you yeah. know, I would too, if I were in their shoes, Yeah, I want the easiest path towards the insurance money. And then I'm not going to bother with Wyoming LLCs. It's, it's not a good use of their time. Yeah. What about foreign qualifications? So some of these, uh, some of the LLCs or some of the ways that I acquired property is actually through a foreign qualification. So I have my company in Wyoming and I do a foreign, quali I'm foreign qualified, let's say in, uh, in Michigan. And then I, with that same entity, I am, uh, I'm buying properties there. Do I right. have, how, how protected am I uh, when I do it this way? Well, on the inside attack where the tenant sues, they can get what's inside that LLC. Doesn't matter if it's Wyoming or Michigan, okay. right? The, 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 the inside attack allows the tenant to get the equity in the LLC. Again, we're not going to put 10 properties in there. Um, so that's the inside attack. The outside attack is where Wyoming comes to, into play to protect you uh, because they, they, need to, they need to reach into the Wyoming LLC. And the rule in Wyoming is that the exclusive remedy is the charging order, which yeah. we mentioned is a lien on distribution. So, um, you know, it's important to understand the difference between the inside attack, the rule is the same in all 50 states, mm -hmm. and the outside attack where Nevada, Wyoming, and Delaware are the best. Mm -hmm. oh, excellent. Excellent. Um, wow, so this is, this is very insightful, definitely. This is taking kind of like the loopholes of real estate to, a, to another, another level, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> so 
Uh, any uh, any other kind of like uh, so what, one of the things that you're doing with uh, you veil not fail is also some kind of uh, of free consulting or free uh, right. is that what you call it free consulting? Yeah, our firm Corporate Direct uh, sets up and maintains LLCs and corporations in all 50 states. And if you go to the CorporateDirect.com website, you can schedule a free 15-minute consultation uh, with one of our incorporating specialists and just see you know, how we can help you, what our fees are, they're very affordable. Mm -hmm. And we'll send you out a quote and, you know, just see if you like working with us. Mm -hmm. um, so we do provide this free 15 minute consultation uh, for people so they can, they can see what they need to do next. And, okay. uh, you know, it, it, it's just a lot of people come to us after they've read the book, which is great because we don't have to explain yeah, that yeah. much. They already know that they need an LLC for holding real estate. That's right. Get the book, read the book, and then <laughs> set up a call. That's for sure. And then that way you don't, you make the best use of your 15 minutes <clears throat> with Corporate Direct. <clears throat> right. One thing that, well, another book that you wrote, I haven't read it. I'm just looking at the, the title here is uh, Scam Proof Your Assets. Uh, so I'd like to know more about that because I've seen some things that were a little bit uh, disturbing um, for, with another investor where basically uh, someone that was not authorized actually filed some kind of uh, resolution to move. They forged, of course, they had to forge some signatures, but they actually moved the LLC from one, one place to another and took control of the LLC that way. Uh, I also see some forgery in terms of uh, title, basically filing a quit claim deed to get, uh, basically have the title of the, uh, of the property, which is like, what, nobody's checking anything. What's going right. on? Right. Well, I mean, the fraud that is out there, the scams that exist out there, Eric, are just, I mean, they're proliferating all the time. Yeah. And so I wrote the book to provide people with kind of a foundation uh, for the types of scams there are, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'd have to update it every three months. There's so many new scams oh, yeah. out there. So, you know, the basic thing is you can't trust people. Um, a lot of counties now have services where if there is that quit claim deed or that type of transfer, they'll notify you. And okay. I think we're going to see that across the country eventually. If someone files a quit claim deed, they're going to go back and notify uh, the prior or the, the most recent owner, uh, mm -hmm. because it is a huge problem. It is. Um, yeah. And you know, the, no one ever gets caught on yeah. these hacks. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the federal government now has this new thing called the corporate transparency act. And after the midterm elections, I mean, this is something that everyone's going to be angry about, but after the midterm elections, you're going to have to file an annual statement with the U.S. Treasury Department as to each LLC and the owners, and then an ID card, an image of a passport or a driver's license. And this is all going to be in one huge database. And the government is certain when they announced the Corporate Transparency Act, they, they were quite certain that no one would ever hack this database. And the same week they announced this thing was the Solar Winds hack where 16 government agencies lost all their information. So to oh, have wow. the, the information on every single LLC in the country in yeah. one database and the government proudly say that it'll never be hacked. <laughs> I can't believe that. Plus no one ever gets caught on these hacks. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, you're creating this giant attractive target yeah. that uh, you know the Russians and the Chinese and everybody else are gonna go after. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the whole scam world out there, the hack world is really disturbing. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I wrote the book, Scam Proof Your Assets, just to give people a heads up on things. Yeah. What's the most common scam that you, uh, you see out there that relates kind of like to real estate? To real estate, <laughs> I think that, you know, the title scams now yeah. are quite big. The other one is where people will find out that you're going to be wiring money. I don't know how they find oh, out. Yeah. You're going to be yeah. wiring money into an escrow account. And they get in the middle and say, oh, we changed the coordinates yeah. and send the money over here. Well, when I buy real estate now, Eric, you know, typically it's in town here. 
I'll drive the check to the title company. I, oh, I'm, really? I'm not doing any electronic transfers uh, wow. just to make sure. Uh, what I do is actually call, I actually call the title, uh, yeah. title escrow company and I just say, I want to come, especially if it's one that, I mean, we, we buy a lot of properties. Like we do about like over 200 properties a, a, a year. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I deal a lot with the same kind of uh, title company. So I know their banking information and it's saved. But whenever it's a new one or whenever they change wiring, they claim that they change wiring information. I call them on the phone and they're used to that. They're just yeah. like, you know, they say, okay, yeah. What, what do you have in terms of uh, banking information? And they, they confirm it over the phone. Uh, yep. You don't have to wait in line or anything like that. And then I can wire the fund. Uh, yeah. 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 I just am so cautious. I'll, I'll pay the extra five bucks for a <clears throat> cashier's check and <laughs> drive it over uh, to the title company. I can't <laughs> line up at the bank. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> well, it's pretty, it's pretty easy here. So, yeah. but yeah, you know, yeah. you, you just, it, it, for your listeners, Eric, it is important to make sure that you are transferring money uh, to the right coordinates because there have been many yeah. cases where people never get their money back. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. gone, it's offshore and you're never gonna get it back. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, you have to be very, very careful. That's why, you know, it's a simple step is to really figure out the, um, you know, call call the title company, make sure you, you talk to them and you confirm the, uh, right. the, you know, the banking information. That's the idea yep. way of doing it. Yeah. All right. Um, so before we uh, we wrap it up, anything else you want to uh, to mention to uh, our audience? Well, it's been uh, great uh, speaking with you today, Eric. And I encourage people to uh, you know read the new book, Veil Not Fail. That mm -hmm. it, it uh, is coming out. And then if if you have a question about forming an entity, an LLC, or a corporation. Uh, feel free to go to corporatedirect.com and we, you know, just schedule a free 15 minute consultation. It would be happy to work with you. Yeah. And as you can see, Garrett is a very friendly uh, guy. I know you're not going to be probably talking to Garrett directly, but his team I'm sure is just as uh, nice to work with and they can really explain kind of like where your, your liabilities or your, uh, your lack of protections are and it can help you fix that. So, Garrett, thank you very much. You're very uh, knowledgeable, obviously, with all 35 years of experience and stuff like that. So thank you for helping uh, everyone stay safe and, uh, and protect their assets. Thank you, Eric. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to Break Away from the Rat Race with your host, Eric Martel. If you want to share your story and experience with our listeners, please message us on Facebook at Break Away from the Rat Race. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast on iTunes.